In the world of debate, there are lots of things to argue about. Will the affirmative plan do what the affirmative says it will do? Will it have undesirable consequences? Are we already doing the plan in the status quo? Does the plan fit within the resolution? Often debates can become confusing because there are so many arguments, bigot arguments that take several minutes to make and small arguments that take only a few seconds to make. And disorganized teams that can't keep track of all the arguments quickly find themselves dropping arguments or forgetting to talk about them in their speeches. So, in order to keep the arguments in a debate round organized, it's best to think in terms of categories of arguments. There are many categories of arguments, but four of them are very special, and we call those four stock issues. A stock issue is a special category of argument within the debate round, and they're special because the affirmative team must prove each of them to be true. And if the affirmative team loses any one of the four burdens of proof, they have not met the burden of proof in general. There are four stock issues that we will discuss in this video, inherency, harms, solvency, and topicality. Each stock issue is covered in greater depth in its own video. So the purpose of this video is simply to introduce you to each of the four stock issues. You can think of stock issues as mini debates and doing so might make debate so much easier to understand. So make sure you understand this next part. Debate rounds are not just two teams hurling arguments back and forth in random order. They're actually very carefully organized mini debates and each debater should be carefully organizing each speech so that a little bit of time is spent on each mini debate. And as each debater speaks, he or she will carefully navigate through each mini debate by making it clear when he or she is moving on to a different mini debate. So for example, you might hear a debater say, let's start with inherency and spend a minute or two making all of the arguments and or responses to the inherency arguments. Then the debater will say something like, let's move on to harms. At that point, everyone else in the round knows that the debater is moving on to a different point in the debate. By efficiently organizing all of the arguments in a debate round into specific categories or mini debates, it's much easier for everyone to keep track of all the arguments in a debate round. This is a critical skill that you must master in order to be successful in debate. Speaking of skills to master, it's worth taking a moment to talk about how keeping arguments organized is a valuable skill to master in today's society. You've no doubt had lengthy debates with your friends or family, some lighthearted, others more serious, and within these debates are a whole lot of complex, smaller arguments. Without debate, it's easier to get frustrated and lost in the shuffle of all the reasons, evidence, arguments, and claims. I'm sure you've felt that frustration of being overwhelmed in a debate before, and it's not fun, especially when you know you have good points to make, but it's hard to make them when the debate gets so confusing and frustrating. With debate, you learn over time how to categorize the arguments so that you can respond to them in a logical, calm manner without missing any arguments, getting lost in the debates, or getting overwhelmed. This not only applies to verbal arguments with friends and families, it also applies to written arguments you make in every essay, paper, presentation, or other presentation type material you'll make in high school, college, and the professional world. So when we say that debate rewires your brain to help you communicate better, this is one of the primary reasons why. Okay, let's get back to stock issues. As we said before, stock issues are a special category of argument. They're special because they are required in order for the affirmative team to meet its burden of proof. We'll talk more about the burden of proof later. For now, let's start by using our fun resolution for this debate video series. Resolved, your high school principal should significantly reduce the amount of homework assigned by your teachers. Keep this resolution in mind as we discuss each of the stock issues. We know that the affirmative team gives the first speech, so let's take a look at the first affirmative constructive. The first affirmative constructive is actually organized by each of the stock issues, so it's a good place to start. The first stock issue is inherency. Inherency is defined as a barrier that keeps the problem stuck in the status quo or the current system. In other words, there's a problem in the status quo and there will continue to be a problem until we propose a plan to fix it. Inherency is an important category in any debate round because the affirmative team has the burden of proof and must first prove that there is a problem in the status quo that will remain in place until we do something about it. You've seen the word adhere, which means to stick, as in to adhere by the rules or even adhesive tape. And inherency means almost the same thing. The problem is stuck in the status quo and the affirmative team is trying to unstick it. Using our homework debate resolution and in all of the debate rounds you will ever debate, the affirmative will start with their inherency arguments where they try to prove that nothing is being done about the problem. So for our fun debate, the affirmative team might read evidence that homework is an ineffective method of teaching and learning and that there are teachers that are signing more and more homework each year. 
The negative team will probably have some good arguments when it's their turn to speak. And so all the arguments on both sides of the debate round that have to do with whether or not there is a problem and whether the problem will remain in place are called inherency arguments. Inherency is the part of the debate round that has to do with whether or not the problem is truly stuck in the status quo. Now the next stock issue is called harms. Harms is the category of arguments in which the two debate teams argue about whether the problem is harmful. Now here's an important side note on the history of debate. The stock issue that we call harms today used to be called significance many years ago. And harms used to be a smaller part of the significant stock issue. But over time, the policy debate resolution started using the term significantly in all the resolutions to define the scope of the affirmative plan, which is different than the term significantly to define the scope of the problem. So we tend to use the term harms to define the scope of the problem and the term significantly to define the extent to which the affirmative plan should solve the problem. Essentially, it's like saying that significant problems require significant solutions. But since we don't want those two terms to be interchangeable, we now say that harmful problems require significant solutions. If that doesn't make sense, feel free to rewind the video just a bit. So, using our homework resolution, the affirmative team might move to the harms argument in the first affirmative constructive after they do inherency. Here, the team might read evidence that the amount of homework currently assigned to students has some harmful effects, such as physical and emotional stress. Remember, the affirmative team had to first prove that the problem is inherent, and now they must also prove that the problem is harmful. Now, let me ask you this. If the negative team argues that the problem is either not stuck in the status quo or that the problem is not harmful, would the judge have a reason to vote for the affirmative team? Probably not. You've heard the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this is precisely why the affirmative team must prove that the problem does exist, the problem will continue to exist, and that the problem is harmful before they even begin to propose a plan to fix the problem. And that brings us to the part of the first affirmative constructive where the affirmative proposes a plan. The plan isn't a stock issue, but since we are organizing our discussion of stock issues around the organization of the affirmative plan, we should point out that this is where the affirmative team will give the details of their plan. So for our fun debate resolution, let's say that the affirmative team proposes that the principal bans all worksheets as homework. So let's move on to the next stock issue, solvency. Solvency, as you might guess, is the part of the debate that focuses on whether or not the affirmative plan will solve the problem. Maybe the problem really does exist, and as a student who is at this very moment doing homework, maybe you would agree. But if the affirmative plan to solve the problem doesn't actually solve the problem, then why would the judge vote for the affirmative plan? So our solvency arguments for our fun debate might present some evidence that says that eliminating worksheets as homework will adequately reduce the physical and emotional stress caused by homework. And it's really important to note that the affirmative teams will sometimes try to present evidence that indirectly tries to prove that their plan will work. For example, maybe their evidence says that reducing homework eliminates stress, or that the average student has five worksheets of homework per night, but neither of these arguments prove that eliminating worksheets will eliminate stress. So you've got to pay very close attention to the solvency evidence presented by the affirmative team. It should always focus on the specific affirmative plan. It should be from a reputable source. And it should say that implementing the affirmative plan will solve the problem. The specific affirmative plan, not the general idea. At this point, the affirmative team will move on to read one or more advantages to their affirmative case. Advantages aren't really stock issues, so we'll shift gears a little bit and talk about our last stock issue, topicality. Topicality is the portion of the debate focused on whether the affirmative plan fits within the resolution. You see, the affirmative plan must do what the resolution says it must do. For our example, this means that the affirmative plan must have the principle of your school do something that significantly reduces the amount of homework assigned by teachers. So a team that proposes a plan in which the superintendent, not the principal, significantly reduces homework would be untopical because the resolution requires the principal to enact the plan. A plan in which the principal significantly reduced the amount of tests assigned by your teachers would also be untopical because the resolution requires the principal to reduce the amount of homework, not tests. So would a plan that only slightly reduced the homework, and so on. Each word in the resolution becomes important, and affirmative teams that propose plans outside the limits of the resolution are untopical. Of course, the affirmative team will have arguments to say that they are topical, but that's another story. Now, topicality is much different than the other stock issues of inherency, harms, and solvency for a, first, for a few reasons. First, the affirmative team does not need to prove that they are topical in the 1AC, the same way that they need to prove that a problem exists 
the problem is harmful, and the plan solves the problem. Therefore, affirmative teams won't even mention topicality in the 1AC. In fact, they are hoping that the negative team never mentions topicality either. Since topicality arguments are only introduced in the round when the negative team believes the proposed plan violates one or more words in the resolution, it is the job of the negative team to introduce topicality as an argument. But if and when the negative team introduces topicality, the affirmative team still has the burden of proof to prove that they are topical. Many rounds never discuss topicality because both the affirmative and negative teams agree that the plan is topical. They may not agree on a lot of other things, but at least they agree on topicality. So those are the stock issues. Inherency, harms, solvency, and topicality. They aren't the only arguments you'll have in a debate round, but they will be part of every round because the affirmative team must prove all four to be true in order to meet its burden of proof. Thus, they are called stock issues because they are always debated in every debate round. Just like stock answer, stock in trade, or keep keeping something in stock, all are ways of saying that something is always available. Stock issues are always argued. The exception to this is topicality. But even if the negative team does not choose to debate topicality, the affirmative team must still meet that burden. And it's only when they don't meet that burden that the negative team brings it up. Collectively, the four stock issues comprise or make up the four burdens of proof. You can think of these like wheels on a car, and each wheel is required for the car to be drivable. Logically speaking, the affirmative team must prove that there's a problem or there's no reason to vote affirmative. They must prove that the problem has harms or there's no reason to vote affirmative. They must prove that their proposed plan solves the problem or there's no reason to vote affirmative. And they must prove that their proposed plan is topical or there's no reason to vote affirmative. If any of those wheels are removed, the car is undrivable, no matter how good the other wheels are. If you're confused about the difference between the term stock issues and burden of proof, think of it like this. Stock issues are the actual wheels, and there are four wheels. Burdens of proof are the requirements to prove that all of the wheels exist, and there are four burdens. In both cases, the names of the stock issues and burdens are the same, inherency, harm, solvency, and topicality. But before we finish, there's one last term that we need to cover, and it's called prima facie. Prima facie is a Latin term that means at first glance. This means that the affirmative case must absolutely present an inherency argument, harms argument, solvency argument, and if pressed, a topicality argument. And they must do these things in the first affirmative constructive. If any of these are missing, the affirmative case doesn't meet its prima facie burden. That term isn't only used that often, and it really only applies if an affirmative team fails to provide one of those arguments in their first speech. But since every team does, it's rarely an issue. And the prima facie burden has nothing to do with whether or not you win the argument, only with whether you present the argument. So if a negative team ever claims that you don't meet your prima facie burden, then either you forgot to read part of your affirmative case, or they forgot to learn what the term actually means. So that's a lot for now. Scrub the video back and review any portion you didn't quite understand, and make sure you can discuss, debate, and defend the following terms. Stock issue, burden of proof, prima facie, inherency, harms, solvency, topicality, and that's all for now. Remember that the affirmative team needs to win every stock issue or they haven't met their four, four burdens of proof. Good luck, debaters. There are four burdens. In other words, oh, I don't, I am, first of all, glance. This means that the affirmative case, case must be absolutely present per, 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 as being able to provide only those who over, think of the judge as only being able to provide, preside, think, <clears throat> and really does exist. Maybe the, maybe the problem does, may, that brings us to the fart, this not, does not bring us to the fart. Oh boy.